Greetings, everyone. We are here in another chapter of numerical analysis, and this time we're going to be looking at numerical calculus. So following through on the theme for a numerical analysis class, we've already talked about some approximation methods for functions like Taylor series. We've talked about numerical algebra, and now it is time to talk about calculus. So in calculus, there are several primary questions, but in, in entry-level calculus, we're thinking, take a function and find its derivative and analyze all the things that you can analyze with derivatives, you know, things like velocity, acceleration, position, that sort of thing. Um, we also want to do integration, so uh, definite integrals in particular. And then there's the, uh, the big question of maximization and minimization of functions, so the optimization problems. Now, those are the big questions of calculus, or at least entry-level calculus. In numerical calculus, we're going to build algorithms to do many of these things. So which algorithms are going to perform faster than others, or maybe more accurately? And then how does an algorithm perform if we take smaller and smaller steps? Because if you stop and think for a second, and I want you to do this, differentiation is a limit question. Now, in numerical analysis, we can't do limits because we can't do infinity. But what we can do is say, drop the limit and take, say, delta x, whatever that is, to be really small. Well, what happens as we take it to be smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller? So how do the algorithms perform as we take a limiting process and change or remove the limit and take the limiting variable and make it smaller and smaller? Well, let me give you a couple examples here. So differentiation. The very first question I've got for you is why would we even want to do numerical differentiation? If I hand you any function defined algebraically, you can turn the crank with the product rule, the chain rule, the quotient rule, um, implicit differentiation, all of the different things that you know from calculus, you can turn the crank and take any derivative that ever needed to be done if the function was defined algebraically. But not every function is really defined algebraically. What if the function is actually a bunch of data and all you have is some data points? Or what if the function is some simulation that is coming from a lab that you have no control over and it takes them half a day to get back to you on what the next function value is? Well, in those particular cases, the chain rule, the product rule, all of that stuff's irrelevant. It doesn't work. So here's a really kind of simple example. Let's say we've got a water quality, water, excuse me, water quality engineering team. They want to find out the rate at which the volume of wastewater is changing in their containment pond throughout the year. They have data of the geometry of the tank. So say it's like some trapezoidal thing or some um, cylindrical thing. Um, and they have uh, data on the depth of the wastewater each day. But they don't have it at every single point, every instant of every day. They have it just at each day. Now this is not a function in the sense that I can write it down algebraically. It's just a bunch of points. Now we could do statistics and fit a function to it, but that might be a little bit of a guess as to what function it is. So we can take derivatives of this if we want to find the rate at which the wastewater is coming in. And numerical differentiation, the techniques in numerical differentiation allow us to do that. Now, the techniques in numerical differentiation also allow us to get plots of all of the derivatives that we could have done by hand before. And maybe those plots will actually come a lot faster than some of the things that we've uh, been able to do by hand. So that's some of the stuff we will do with numerical differentiation. Let's look at integration. Now, in numerical integration, why would you want to do that? So let's, let's play the same game. If I hand you any function algebraically and say take an antiderivative, some of them are going to be pretty easy. You've got the power rule for antiderivatives. You've got the trigs and the um, exponentials. But U substitution, integration by parts, trig substitution, some of those nice techniques you learned in calculus or Calc 2, they don't really work on that many functions. They're kind of highly specialized. So look at this one. This is a little bit of a mess. And yes, I could take this fraction and factor it out front but I got an e to the minus x squared. Think for a second. You have an antiderivative of that? Could we use the fundamental theorem of calculus on that? Now, of course, I give you this because the answer is, well, no. Um, I mean, yeah, there are techniques to get some nice, uh, nice solutions, but based on what you know from kind of calc 1, calc 2, no, no, there is none. But this particular integral 
is highly important. It actually is an area under the normal distribution in statistics. This is like the driving force of statistics. This is an integral that's really important and it drives a lot of science. So we do it numerically. Right now you can ignore all of my code. This is kind of the guy we want here. I've got my normal distribution in blue and I want the green shaded region. Now in numerical integration, just like with numerical differentiation, which we'll see in this numerical analysis chapter, we're gonna take this region and chop it up into tiny little pieces. And maybe we'll approximate with rectangles, like I could actually add up just by counting up the rectangles here. Or maybe we'll approximate by drawing trapezoids, or maybe we'll fit some curve to each one of these little pieces. Now, <clears throat> I've got one particular numerical integration technique set up here. And one of the fundamental questions is what happens when I take smaller and smaller and smaller subintervals? So this is like taking the limit on a Riemann sum and then pulling the limit off and just saying, hey, let's do this discreetly. Instead of taking infinitely many subintervals, which is what the limit would tell us to do, let's take two or five or 10. Now, <clears throat> the approximation technique I'm using here, if I use two subintervals, I get a horrible approximation, 29% um, error. If I take five subintervals, my percent error is like 1.5%. 10 subintervals, I'm at about 0.2%. And after 50 subintervals, you almost notice no difference whatsoever. So this is the sort of analysis that we're going to do with numerical integration. We'll actually do something very similar with numerical differentiation. Okay, so those problems are all well and good. Optimization I'm gonna leave for later. I don't wanna spoil some of the thunder on cool numerical optimization, but I do wanna give you, oops. Oh, I have another numerical integration example. I forgot I had this on this slide here. Um, you don't necessarily always have to have the function defined algebraically. Like what if this is another water flow problem? What if you had the rate this time uh, coming through a dam and you wanted to find how much total water came out? So this again is not a function that you have defined algebraically. This is a function that is defined by the data that's given to you. Now, obviously fundamental theorem of calculus is out, out the window there, but we can do things like numerical integration techniques to approximate that volume. And then lastly, this is what I was leading to up to before, you can do these cool edge detection problems with numerical differentiation. This is actually a calculus problem, but you would never think of this as calculus. We've got this extremely cute little puppy dog up here. Actually, she's old. She's not a puppy in this picture. Um, and we can use numerical, in a, numerical differentiation techniques to find the edges on the image and the threshold we can look at sometime later. You don't need to worry about that right now. What I'm telling you is that numerical differentiation is being used to find the edges of the image and actually pull out the dog itself. And maybe this image is maybe the best one for edge detection. So these are all the things that we kind of can do or some of the things that we can do with numerical differentiation.